Okay guys, I'm back from Vegas, and while I was gone, this arrived via crate and forklift. This is actually, believe it or not, no suspense here, I'm going to tell you, it's a all the parts I need to construct a new server build I'm doing that's a one-of-a-kind, super unique. Many people that are new to the channel may not know, and I don't promote it that much, but I do build my own servers. It's something that music servers and uh, something that I know well and have tested over the years from an audio file perspective. I've had all the tweaks, the USB reclockers and all that stuff. You might have seen it in my previous videos. Um, so I know how to determine the snake oil and the stuff that doesn't matter and it's just done for marketing fluff versus what really matters. And as you've seen, one of the things is having the ability to do video and all that kind of fun stuff that companies like Hi-Fi Rose are now capitalizing on and doing well. Uh, but also aesthetics are something that are, if I was going to do something, it wasn't going to be kind of me too stamped aluminum case, doing volume, anything like that. I've got a regular job. I don't need the money for do that kind of a business, but this is going to be a fun project. It's a one of a kind build for a one of a kind customer. It may be polarizing for sure when I'm finished with it, but definitely cool and I'll walk you through the process but just want to give you a little heads up on this and also I'm back from Vegas got a lot of other fun things to show you and talk about so let me pause this I'll go upstairs and continue okay I think I'll do this GoPro style of video today in homage to the Z reviews guy because I'm so sunburnt from uh Fun time we had in Vegas. Maybe I'll put up some video. The members got to see some video um, of that fun. But mostly I uploaded on the public channel audio file stuff. So I was just watching on my main rig. Got a chance to appreciate hearing her play on the main rig, which is an ironic tie-in to what I'm doing downstairs with servers and my server here. And I thought I'd kind of maybe... Uh, capture a few things that tie it all in for you guys. Number one, though, talking about um, Dendil, if you haven't seen her videos that I featured uh, or heard of her before, you may want to check it out. She's an amazing singer. Uh, this was the one, though, where the guy was in the back trying to bomb her Instagram live with making noises on top of just making a fool of himself. So I do regret not punching him, but then I'd probably be banned from Aria and not able to see her again. I mean, literally, I spent probably close to five hours um, over two days listening to her play. If we had dinner reservations, like at nine, I'd just go down to take us at like six or seven. And she'd usually start around seven and just watch her. And then one night I even came back and she was still playing at 11, watched her again. And so over two nights, you know, I spent a lot of time and requested a lot of songs. So I have a lot more. And what I'm going to do, unfortunately, if you notice in my videos, you have these clowns and then you have no high noise floor with people around me that, are, you know, are talking and not really interested in the music for whatever reason. Um, you know, crazy people, I think. But in any case, it's Vegas. So uh, what I was going to do is if any song that I requested and filmed also had her Instagram live going at the time, her audio is actually better. Maybe, you know, I don't do a lot of editing on my channel, but maybe I'll put her audio on the video so that you can hear her better and it'll serve a couple of purposes you'll get a better feed of what you know she sounds like but also if her stuff is already copyrighted i'm not looking to make money off of her i'm looking just to promote her just goodwill because i, I think she's so talented so if she's got it already copyrighted she'll get credit from it from youtube not me um you know, with my audio, with the high noise floor. So it's a kind of a win-win deal. But one other thing to let you know about is she has a, um, she only has a few um, subscribers on YouTube. She should have more than me. So sign up for her on YouTube. And if you do watch her on Instagram live, you know, remember that she does have Cash App and Venmo. I was filling up her jar uh, regularly at this weekend, but you can't really do that on these Instagram lives, but she'll take requests from there and you can basically have a personal concert with her. It was just amazing how many songs I was able to get her play. And actually, uh, it ties into another video I was going to do because I had her play uh, Coldplay Fix You, which was, I ordered this DVD and I was going to do a video for you guys about this. Um, not so much to pimp you guys on 
liking Coldplay or disliking Coldplay um, or Chris Martin. She's far better than Chris Martin. I mean, he should resign uh, the way she covers Fix You versus him. But there's a lot of things I realized with Coldplay over the years and seeing them live and seeing them at um, these concerts that was something that I was going to do a video on anyway um, to kind of show you, again, why you want to have video capabilities with your system and your server. So um, I'll, I'll do the Fix You uh, cover that she does. I'll release that later as well as some other ones. So stay tuned for that. But again, it all boils down to being able to play this on your main rig and be able to hear her even better. Um, now, one other thing that the different layers to being an audiophile. One thing I really got... Um, aware of watching her live is despite her having high noise floor venue, a PA speaker and overhead speakers of the casino, it was still super enjoyable live and gave me just as much enjoyment as sitting in front of my system, MBL extremes, you know, sometimes we get neurotic about listening to the same recordings a hundred times over and on this fancy gear when, you know, listening to it, you know, on a video or live on our systems, um, even with high noise floor, not perfect, is no mastering, no fancy, just one solo singer and piano player. Amazing time. So, you know, if you can appreciate these videos, you'll probably sync with what I think about, you know, what it really means to be an audiophile. Again, I'm not going to tell you how to be an audiophile. You can audiophile however you want. But anybody that says, oh, you're not an audiophile because you've got video and this is in between your speakers, you know, well, come on over. We'll pull this up. You can, <laughs> and then we'll watch this. And you tell me, would you rather have this down or be able to pull it up and down and not be able to hear this? You know, it, it's just a no brainer to me. Um, and then I can even showcase some other things like um, DVDs that really are eye opening, ear opening. But let's talk about servers because I'm not sure how much I'm going to be able to show you with this private build downstairs. I'll try to show you as much as I can, but this is for a select customer and, you know, I'll show you what I can. Uh, it's a very unique build. But let's talk about servers because, you know, many people might be new subscribers, don't know that I actually build servers. I don't really pimp it. I'm not doing this for like a hardcore business or volume, do it for select people um, and contract on an individual basis. And, and almost all the builds are unique. I do put a lot into the aesthetics. But let's talk about, before we get to the aesthetics, the most important thing I already talked about is having the ability to do video, Instagram, anything. Um, has to have that. And only recently with Hi-Fi Rose have I seen the industry pivot to that um, versus where I think they were misguided in the past. And so let's just talk about where I deviate from other servers. And again, if you disagree, that's fine. It's not gonna change my mind. I have a lot of background in this. I've tested everything. As you can see here, I've brought out some of the things I've tested over the years. People say, oh, well, you can't knock it unless you try it. Well, you know, I've had the Intona, uh, the Uptone Regen, the super capacitor power supply. I have the iFi one somewhere around here. I've got an outboard uh, linear power supply, separate USB card, even a separate card. I, this is my test bench, so I can test different things. And so uh, this is like an added card that you can add on to see if it makes a difference or not. So I try all of these different things and, you know, can A, B and see if anything makes a difference, doesn't make a difference, or how much of a difference and whether it's worth the money. And I've been doing this since like, um, not building servers, but I've been testing this stuff because I've been on the forefront of doing digital source um, since like 2008, 2010, you know, you know, it's crazy. So I do have a lot of experience that, you know, I can share. And again, if you disagree, that's fine. You find other avenues that work for you. That's fine. I'm just saying that, you know, this is what works for me and some things that you may not have considered because a lot of times these server companies, in my opinion, are telling you stuff that's more for marketing fluff and not tangible stuff. And let's just talk about one common misconception or misperception out there. And it has to do with the power supply going into the server. A lot of people say, linear power supply, linear power supply. That's the only way to go. Well, even before I started building power supplies, I had somebody test one of these companies, linear power supplies um, that were marketed just for audio files. And a big name brand for this specific purpose. And this is all they do. And uh, three out of the five 
tested poorly for voltage regulation and just was not fit for being used. And, you know, it's a common thing that I've seen on the forums. You know, most people don't complain about computers breaking or it's mainly a software related issue when they do break. But in the audiophile realm, I just see so many people having issues with their servers. And a lot of it has to do with inappropriate power supplies for their motherboard, not delivering the power um, properly. And then also fans. Let's talk about the misperception about being fanless. You know, almost every component here needs to run at a certain thermal temperature for optimal performance. I mean, it's not even debatable. This is stuff that is measurable. The processor itself will throttle itself if it runs too hot. RAM has uh, impact depending on the temperature, uh, your hard drive, all kinds of things. Even capacitors have thermal limits that they like to perform under uh, for proper performance and longevity. So, you know, just being against fans makes no sense at all because what it really boils down to is, again, not only buying the right quality, but also programming things in the operating system to properly work with the goal that you have in mind. So in this case, I have a fanless video card because in the case of a video card, those fans are kind of noisy and I don't really need to do gaming or anything. So... I get rid of the noisy fans that are typically heard, and then I use a very high-end fan on the processor with a huge heat sink that, again, I can tweak it in the BIOS such that this fan just runs at an idle uh, speed, Such, and then there's one on the uh, processor, the motherboard itself, and I'll get to that in a second, but... You know, this can be controlled in the BIOS such that you cannot even hear it. And it will only increase in speed if it monitors an issue where, for whatever reason, it's ex increasing in temperature dangerously. And then this will kick on much faster if there's any demand on it or for whatever reason, and it'll protect it. So, again, I can bring this as close as you want. You're not hearing any fan from here. If anything you're hearing, the only thing I hear right here is actually the fan from my projector. That's actually louder and I can hear it from this position behind me versus anything here. And again, it's because I've got it throttled to run at a safe temperature and stay at an idle speed until it monitors anything that would require it to bump it up. And then a processor <laughs> fan. Almost every motherboard now has processor fans or the more important thing to talk about is a PWM to distribute the power and control the voltages to the fans and, and other uh, components on in the that the uh, motherboard has to power. Well, that's one of the reasons people say they want to use a linear power supply here instead of a switch mode is because they say, oh, switch mode is noisy. Well, again, like I said, most of those linear power supplies aren't well designed, cheap, and they aren't as reliable as ones that are sold in the hundreds of thousands. Corsair has been making them forever. Super quiet, super reliable. Test it, it very goes through rigorous testing and reliability. I would put this over almost any linear power supply you could build, but even if you could outbuild it with a linear power supply, it's not really doing as much as you think because you think you're getting rid of switch mode power supply here. Well, there's a PWN, P -P PWM, uh, distributing and regulating the voltages on the motherboards that almost everybody buys stock. Some people will modify it. The only one that I've seen recently, just recently, SOTM is going to make their own motherboard. But odds are good it's going to have a PWM on it too. And what that means is it's still going to have the switching uh, noise and the th stuff that you're saying that you're getting rid of here. It's, it's like almost having two leaks in a, in, a, uh, in a pipe and then only fixing one and not the other. You know, what's much more, if you want to be neurotic about it, and that's what I've got hooked up here, is a separate USB card and then a linear power supply powering that card. And that way you can, and then this card is, can be done A, B. So I can tell whether the linear power supply makes a difference or not um, powering after the motherboard and after the main power supply of the uh, computer. So I'm not saying, you know, there's more than one way to skin a cat, and this isn't the only way to do it. 
But I'd rather put the money into better parts. Like a lot of these fancy servers with linear power supply have the rinky-dink uh, disk drives still in them. These are NVMe, very fast, heat sink on it. Um, again, they don't have cooling. Some of these, like the Rune Nucleus, don't even have the heat sink fins um, hooked up to anything that's on the case. It's not even hooked up to the uh, processor. So, of course, there's going to be more issues with reliability on that. You may get away with it. You may be fine. You know, I'm sure somebody can say, oh, I've had my Nucleus forever. It's never done. Okay, great. Uh, it's just a ticking time bomb when you don't have the ability to respond to thermal uh, demands and you may be always running it too hot for what its optimal performance is. You just don't know because odds are good with whatever server you're using. They don't give you the chance to take a look at the thermal temperatures. And in another video, I've shown you what kind of thermal temperatures I get with this. Now, with another misconception is um oh they said oh these leds those are noisy leds you don't want that um well any server you buy whether it's r uh lumen whatever they have a whole screen in front full of leds and a screen that's powered by the motherboard uh and the hi-fi rose has basically a whole tv screen in front so these leds i can turn off like that um, and A, B, whether LEDs make a difference or not. I think they're cool, and they don't add any negative to the performance. Just like these screens on the Lumens and the R-Enders and the Hi-Fi Rose, um, you know, would have negligible impact if they addressed it properly um, in the design. So, you know, another misperception about getting neurotic about the wrong things is some of the things I wanted to just share with you. And again, I've tested it all, done them all, um, I'm welcome to hear anybody's other experiences, but like I said, it's going to be very tough to change my mind. And, you know, this is what I believe in doing now. You don't have to spend a whole lot on looks, obviously, and you don't have to go with all of these high-end parts. Uh, there are budget builds that, you know, I don't really want to do those my own self for people, but, you know, I can kind of point you in the direction of budget builds that can get you pretty much the same performance. Really, when you want to look at your servers now, you want to look at features, and that's the most important thing. You know, can you do this with your server? Can you bring up Instagram Live and see her on a Friday and Saturday night, request songs, and get a personal concert from Dendel Hoyt? If you can't, uh, I'm saying, you know, your server is not serving you well. You know, that's all I got to tell you. So um, I'll circle back with more on this in the future. If you guys respond and want me to talk more about this, I'm happy to do that. Um, I do do private builds for certain customers, but it's got to be super cool. I only like to do, you know, over the top type stuff. And then um, I'll show you what I can from that build downstairs and then have some more videos with Dendil all this week. So lots of stuff to get out before Expona, which is right around the corner. So sign up, subscribe guys, and I'll see you back here soon.